the Delta variant is gaining ground across the globe, the Delta variant is the most transmissible strain of coronavirus, and it has the ability to evade antibodies against the original strain. The Delta variant is causing spikes in new cases even in nations with high vaccination rates. Delta has become the dominant strain in the UK, representing 95% of new cases. The Delta variant now accounts for greater than 50% of new infections in parts of the United States, particularly among unvaccinated groups. The Delta variant is sweeping across Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and Australia. Delta is one of several strains that have been designated by public health agencies as variants of concern. These are the B117, first found in the UK, the B1351, first identified in South Africa, P1, found in Brazil, and B1-6172, first isolated in India. The World Health Organization has recommended naming these strains with Greek letters to simplify the nomenclature and to avoid attribution to any country or region. As long as the coronavirus replicates, mutations are inevitable. Mutations, that is, changes in the amino acid sequence, occur randomly after the virus binds to the ACE2 receptor via the spike protein, the virus's RNA infiltrates the host cell. The viral enzyme RNA-dependent RNA polymerase makes multiple copies of the virus's RNA. It is prone to making replication errors. The viral RNA copies are then translated to viral protein, leading to more virus particles, which then go on to infect other cells. The vast majority of the changes are neutral or deleterious to the survival of the virus, but very rarely, after billions of replication cycles, the virus hits the winning combination and finds an amino acid change or several changes that confer better survivability. These strains proliferate and become dominant. This is a consequence of natural selection. The new strains evade the host's immune system, are transmitted between people more easily, and enter cells more easily. The spike protein, which protrudes from the surface of the virus particle, is considered the most important component for infectivity because it binds to the ACE2 receptor. Also, the spike protein elicits the greatest number of antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Like all proteins, the spike is folded up as a knotted three-dimensional shape. If we spread the protein apart, we see that there are 10 mutations or alterations in the Delta variant. Each mutation is shown using the amino acid code and the amino acid sequence number. For example, in this mutation, threonine, T, is replaced by lysine, K, at the 478th amino acid residue in the spike protein. Residues 156 and 157 have been deleted. The mutations can lead to stronger interactions between the spike protein and the host's ACE2 receptor. While there may be antibodies against the original strain, the resistant variant has acquired mutations in the spike protein, which lead to weaker interactions between the spike and antibodies, so-called immune escape mechanisms. In people who had COVID disease, blood samples showed lower neutralizing antibody activity against the Delta strain. So, if you were infected before with coronavirus, you could be infected again with the Delta variant, even though you have antibodies against the original strain. The L452R and the T478K mutations are in the receptor binding domain and are thought to reduce antibody binding while enhancing binding to ACE2. Changing the electrostatic potential of the receptor binding domain may improve binding to the ACE2 receptor. The uncharged leucine at position 452 changed to the positively charged arginine, and in position 478, the neutral threonine changed to the positively charged lysine. These positively charged amino acid residues in the delta variant may increase binding affinity to the negatively charged ACE2 receptor. Other mutations have been found to improve the Delta variant's fitness. The P681R mutation in the furin cleavage site accelerates the cleavage of the spike protein, the first step in viral fusion to the host cell. 
After more than 180 million cases of coronavirus infections and 4 million people dying from COVID-19, it seemed like the end was in sight. If not for the Delta variant, we might have been close to vanquishing this disease. Although there have been cases of breakthrough infection among those who have been vaccinated, these represent mild cases, not hospitalizations. The vaccines in the USA and Europe are effective at reducing severe COVID disease resulting from infection with the Delta variant. So, how can we stop new variants from popping up and spreading around the globe? That's right, get vaccinated. Only mass vaccination will prevent the appearance and spread of coronavirus variants. As Angela Rasmussen has stated, no infection means no replication, no replication means no mutation, no mutation means no new variants. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in further reading from the scientific literature, take a look at the video description. And please subscribe to Science Sketch.